recently I had a discussion on Bitcoins and it was a quite lively discussion so I'm trying to explain in this video what Bitcoins are all about. Now I have to warn you this could be pretty boring. Now anyway, um, a lot of people talk about Bitcoins but what are Bitcoins? Now Bitcoins is cryptocurrency and really all what it is, it is some cyber software somebody developed some software that allows you to do transaction of digital signatures and digital signatures are encrypted pieces of text basically and we happen to call it a bitcoin it really has no value not at all the only value it has is what people want to pay for it the demand and if there's no demand there's no value so basically it doesn't exist it only exists in the cyberspace. It exists in the internet and nowhere else. Now, but what is it really? Well, you can buy a Bitcoin for hard money. You will spend your dollar and your euro and you buy them for a certain price. Somebody makes money on it. Somebody is pocketing the money and gives you a Bitcoin. Now the Bitcoin is nothing more than a digital signature and a Bitcoin is generated by a miner, but I'll come back to that in a minute. Now the Bitcoin itself has a unique address and the address of the Bitcoin is generated by a random generator who creates a public key and then that public key's key is used to calculate a unique address for that Bitcoin. So if you own Bitcoins, then you have public keys for every Bitcoin. Now, the Bitcoin is not in your pocket. You can't touch it. You can't feel it. It doesn't exist. But you do have the key in your wallet. It's a storage device. If you lose your private key, then you have lost your Bitcoin and there's no way to recover it. Now, really, do you want to buy that kind of currency? I wouldn't. Especially when it was invented by people that are unknown in 2008. So who's behind it? Now the idea was simple. Instead of having to use a third man or a man in the middle, like a bank, an institute or a government that will control every euro or dollar you spent that you don't issue it twice and they verify uh, the money with bitcoins, you could actually do a peer-to-peer -peer transfer you can go and pay someone without a man in the middle. Although that's why they say, I think the miner is the man in the middle. And the other thing of course is that Bitcoins are kind of good for criminals because you stay anonymous. There's no trace on it. Anyhow, um, so how does it really work? So if you have a Bitcoin and you pay someone else with it, then that transaction will be broadcasted over the internet. Yes, broadcasted. And in the internet, uh, certain people have signed up to become a miner. And a miner is someone who is validating and calculating the hash of a new block. That's what they do. They use the CPU power, they get some Bitcoin software and they will calculate it. If they are the first ones to validate a valid transaction, they get rewarded for it and their reward is possibly a Bitcoin or a part of a Bitcoin. Now the amount of Bitcoins that a miner can create is limited. Well I should say every four years it's going to be halved. Now the total amount of Bitcoins that can ever be generated is around 21 million. So in a couple of years from now it will be all finished anyway. Now more and more cryptocurrency comes on the market that means that people have more choices, so the demand may be less. Now, I personally would never buy Bitcoins because it doesn't exist. I'm an engineer, so you start checking it out. What is it really? And then you find out that the software that was developed is nothing more than a public ledger. And a public ledger is a big database distributed across the miners. So all the miners have a local copy of that big database. And each time there's a transaction, they have to hash or track back the hash. And a hash is an encryption form, and the Bitcoin is using 
a hash SHA-256, meaning that the whole transaction in a block is encrypted in 256 bytes, combined with a timestamp, a unique timestamp, that gives it a hash, and it's placed in a block. And that hash is a reference in the next block for the next transaction. And when the next transaction is happening, the miner has to validate, recalculate back the hash. And if he has X amount of leading zeros, then he knows that it's valid. Now, the amount of leading zeros is going to vary. And that's what we call the difficulty. So, if too many Bitcoins are being generated, then there has to be a halt to it and it has to be slowed down. So, we, they will increase the complexity of calculating backwards the hash. So, that's a bit the principle of it. Not very difficult, but how secure is it? How do you make sure that the Bitcoin that you receive from someone hasn't been spent once before or twice before? Because it takes some time before the miner or any of the miners can actually calculate and validate that block. And that's a big risk. Now, the only security that Bitcoins have is the philosophy of there is more honest CPU power in the world than there is dishonest CPU power. Because at the end of the day, it's the CPU power that validates and maintains the integrity of the public ledger. I think uh, that's very dangerous to state. Of course, there are more honest people than dishonest people. Well, at least I hope. And if there are more honest people, then there will be more honest CPU. And if there's more honest CPUs, then the chain of blocks will be very long. And Bitcoins always work with the longest chain of blocks. So the criminals, they would have lower amount of CPUs, at least that's what assumed. And therefore, their blockchain would always be very short or shorter. Well, this is all good and well, but is it really true? Now, the nice thing about the blockchain is that if you wanted to change any of the blocks in the chain, you would have to chain the whole block. That means you have to do a hell of a lot of calculations and it's practically impossible to calculate it that far back. There is just not enough time. Or at least that's with the current technology. Now, don't underestimate criminals. I mean, they could come up with supercomputers and they will come. I mean, if technology evolves very fast. And even before we know it, the criminals will actually be able to create and modify um, the, the, the ledger. And maybe they will pay you once and then they pull the, the Bitcoin back even before you know it. Or they spend it multiple times. So basically, I think it's a very dangerous and risky business. To me, it's a piece of software that exists in the cyberspace, not really protected. And in fact, they have already proven that you can modify six blocks in a chain today. So you can imagine um, what it could be within a couple of years. To me, it's a bubble. I will not invest in it. But of course, it's a money maker, right? People gamble with it. But at the end of the day, it has no real value. You cannot go to anybody to complain about it. It's a very lucrative way of making money. And, and you should really wonder who's behind it. Because I think trading in digital signatures with no value attached to it, I don't know. This to me is in a bubble. And this bubble will break for sure. You can't go to the bank and get your money. You can't go anywhere and get your bitcoins. Because if the internet is gone, and you can think about moments of crisis, it's over. You can't get to it. Your money is gone. No trace of it. Anyway, uh, that's what bitcoins are all about. Thank you for viewing. And by the way, I'll make a more technical presentation very soon on how it exactly works for the technical guys amongst us. Thank you for viewing.